Hey everybody, I know it's been a while, but I'm back with a new series focusing on demystifying Linux and making it a bit more simple to understand for those interested in learning more about it. This will be the first video in a series of tutorials dealing primarily with the terminal or the command line. In this video, we'll be covering some simple terminal commands. First off, let's learn how to open the terminal. There are a couple different ways. You can go to the top left of your screen here to Applications, Accessories, Terminal. There's also a keyboard shortcut, which is Control-Alt-T. Now, when you open a terminal, you're going to notice a few things. First is the username. In this case, it's Nicholas. And then you see an at symbol and then another name. This is the computer's name. Then you'll see a colon, a tilde. The tilde signifies the home directory, which is just like the users folder in Windows Vista, Windows 7, or in Windows XP, it's the documents and settings folder. The dollar sign indicates that you're currently in the terminal as an underprivileged user, meaning a user that does not have admin privileges. So, let's begin with a simple command called date. This displays the current day and time, as well as the date, of course. Now, every command has a switch, option, or argument. These are things that modify the output or just the general behavior of the command. So, for example, let's use the dash capital R. Notice that the format in which the output is displayed has changed. In order to uh, look at different arguments or switches of a particular command, you type in the command dash dash help. You'll see now all the different options that you can put into the command in order to modify it. So here we use the RFC 28 22 modifier and that just outputs the date and time in a different format. Now if you want more details or a more comprehensive explanation of a particular command that you're interested in, you do this by typing in the man command and then whatever command you're interested in. This will bring up online documentation of the command. So if we do or man date this will bring up the man page or the manual page of this command. You can see that everything is a lot more detailed. Now you cannot browse through this using the mouse. So there are a couple methods of doing so. You can either move line by line by hitting enter or using the arrow up and down. You can navigate through entire pages by using the spacebar. And in order to exit back to the command prompt, you hit the Q. All right, so we know a little bit about the date command. Let's learn about the cal command, or the calendar command. Let's type that in now. So you can see this displays the current year, month, and day. Now, as with the date command, this has switches as well. So let's try it with the Y switch. This will display the entire calendar year. All right, so we know a couple commands now. Let's learn about the semicolon. The semicolon separates two commands that you type on one line and executes one after the other. So for example, let's type in date, semicolon, cal. As you can see, the date command has been executed first, followed by the cal command. Now, you can even add more than just two commands, as well as add their switches. So we know date, dash capital R, and we know cal, dash Y. And for shiggles, let's add another date at the end. So let me open this for you. As you can see, we typed it up here. Now the date with the R switch has been displayed up here, followed by the calendar year, and then finally date with no options enabled. All right, so say you wanted to redirect all this output to a file. Not specifically just this command, but since we only know these now, let's work with these. 
You can do this using the redirect character or the greater than symbol. Now you use this the same way as you would the semicolon. So for example, let's do the date command followed by the redirect symbol and then a file that we'd like to create. Let's call this date.txt. As you can see, the output has not been displayed on the screen at all. However, we can open this file in a text editor. So let's use gedit, which is the equivalent of Notepad in Windows. You can see now that the file is open called date.txt in the home directory, as you can tell by the tilde up here, and the output of the command is displayed. All right, let's try this with the cal command. Again, the output is not displayed in the terminal whatsoever. Now, instead of typing up an entire command that I previously entered, you can actually use the up arrow to scroll through the history of commands you've typed in. So here's, I, I just hit the up arrow twice, and I can run the gedit date.txt command once again. You can see now that the cal output has been redirected into this very same file. But you can see there's a problem with this. The date command we ran earlier into this very same file has been completely overridden by the cal command. The date, date command output is nowhere to be found on this file. So in order to append or add output into a file that's already been created and already has information in it, you just use the redirect character twice. For example, it looks something like this. This will append information at the bottom of the file. So let's use this in conjunction with everything we've learned in this video so far. Let's try using the date command with the R switch. Redirect it into a file called date.txt. Then we can use the semicolon cal y and then the date.txt file once again. And let's open it. So you can see now that the date command has been executed and redirected into this file, and that the calendar command itself has not overridden any previous information left by the date command. All right, so we're reaching the end of the video. I hope this has been somewhat informative and I hope that the command line is not as intimidating as it was before. Take care and thank you for watching.